let's learn about cellular transport mechanisms. Many substances move in and out of cells. In order to get substances into or out of the cell, they must get through the cell membrane. Let's take a closer look at the cell membrane. The cell membrane consists of a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipids consist of a phosphate head that loves water, or hydrophilic, and a lipid tail that hates water, or hydrophobic. The phospholipids arrange themselves into a bilayer with the head pointing outward and the tails pointing inward. Lipid-soluble substances can pass through the phospholipid bilayer. Some examples of lipid-soluble substances include oxygen and carbon dioxide. Steroids are another example. We can say these substances move by diffusion. In diffusion, substances move from higher to lower concentration until reaching equilibrium. Here is an example of diffusion. A drop of dye in water will move from where there is more dye, an area of higher concentration, to where there is less dye, an area of lower concentration. The molecules will eventually evenly distribute throughout the solution. Non-lipid soluble substances cannot pass through the membrane, so they need a special doorway called a protein channel. In this example, sodium moves into a cell through a protein channel. Other examples of substances that move through protein channels include glucose, chloride, and potassium. We can say that these substances move by facilitated diffusion. In facilitated diffusion, substances move from higher to lower concentration until reaching equilibrium, but through a protein channel. Substances can also move against gradients. Here we have more sodium outside of the cell than in. If sodium moved by facilitated diffusion, it would move into the cell. However, energy can be used to move sodium against its gradient or outside of the cell. Substances can move against their gradients using active transport proteins. These proteins use ATP for energy. An example of an active transport protein is the sodium-potassium pump. The sodium-potassium pump moves three sodium outside of the cell and two potassium inside of the cell for every molecule of ATP used. The sodium-potassium pump works to maintain concentration gradients. In osmosis, water moves through a semi-permeable membrane, which is a membrane that allows water through, but not solute. Water will move toward an area of higher solute concentration. If a beaker is separated into two compartments by a semi-permeable membrane, and each compartment has a different solute concentration, water will move toward the area of higher solute concentration. Tonicity or concentration can be described in terms of isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions. Isotonic solutions have the same concentration as body fluids. Hypotonic solutions are less concentrated than body fluids. Hypertonic solutions are more concentrated than body fluids. In this experiment, a red blood cell is dropped into a hypotonic solution. Water will flow into the red blood cell because the cell contains a higher solute concentration. The cell will swell and burst. Likewise, if a red blood cell is dropped into a hypertonic solution, water will flow out of the cell, causing it to shrink or crenate. Water again flows toward the higher concentration of solute, 
which this time is outside of the cell. Other methods of moving substances in and out of cells include exocytosis and endocytosis. In exocytosis, vesicles inside of the cell adhere to the cell membrane and release substances. Neurotransmitters are released this way. In endocytosis, the cell membrane enfolds around substances to bring them into the cell. There are different kinds of endocytosis. In phagocytosis, the cell engulfs material such as debris or bacteria. In pinocytosis, the membrane enfolds around extracellular fluid to bring it into the cell. In receptor-mediated endocytosis, substances attach to membrane receptors that signal the cell membrane to enfold around the substance. We hope you have learned something about cell transport and see you next time.